together who was, one of them was in a brick, brick factory, which had no sides, just a roof, like, not that I cared. And the other was on the other part of the city, which was a lumber yard, sort of, well, similar. So, wait, you went to one of the ghettos and there was just a roof and no sides. That's right. And everybody had to live under this roof? And did you live as families? And yeah, we were as families. We brought our covers and, and quilts and things like that and put it on the floor and slept next to each other like corporate, or how do you say it? So how, how did they tell you what to bring with you? Only what you could carry. Only what we could carry, which we took and we took some food. And then, I don't know, they cooked something, but we all, still we had some food, so we cooked our, actually, Agis' mother made the cooking and everybody got a portion, whatever we had. And shall I say about the latrine something? Yeah. <laughs> there was no facility, but they had a big latrine, and it was completely open. Oh, so there was no privacy. Privacy? Are you kidding? Do they care about privacy? And many times, it's not, a, it's unfortunate when a plane went by and they took pictures. So just to humiliate you more than you were already humiliated, all right? Before we, they took us, we had to go to the ghetto also, they made a declaration, in three days you have to leave your own blah, 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 and just march to the ghetto. So for three days you were preparing what you were going to bring and... Yes. <clears throat> so all eight children and you and your parents and all of your relatives from the... Actually we were put into <coughs> separate two camps for some reason, but mm -hmm. that's, that's... You mean the kids thing. were separated? No. Some of them were with my mother and we were, since we were living with my grandmother, we, were, we had to go with her. You had to stay in the day, place where you were. Oh. You weren't allowed to change places. So... Anyway, we were in the ghetto probably four or five weeks. I'm not even sure, or maybe two months. So it was you and, with your grandmother, it was you and... Avi. Avi and Agi. Agi and Agi's brother and her parents and Avi's pa mother only. Her father was already dead, which she didn't know. Avi from Jersey and her little tiny brother. So none Avi. of your sisters or brothers were with no, you? not then. And who else was on my aunt with a six month old baby, and my grandmother, of course. And then one day they each, then when they decided to deport us to Auschwitz, they had groups. Each, there were five groups. I was in the, the one from before the last, that was the fourth group. They said, you have to show up, you have to match up and carry what you could. And on the way to the, Train a lot of people through the, just drop things, it was too heavy. Let's say for my grandmother or little children, they couldn't carry anything. Finally, they pushed us into a wagon, like a cattle wagon, like the door. We didn't know anything or what, and then, I don't know how people could ask how you didn't protest. How do you protest when you are, have nobody who would help you? You have no guns or anything, and we wouldn't know what to do with that anyway. None of us. So anyway, we went, and oh, and all the lies which were told that they're going to go and send us to a working camp, and the older people will take care of the babies, and only the healthy, younger people who will do the work. That was drawn Andre and Al into the people all the time. And we figured if we survive, we survive, all right? There was no way to run away anywhere anyway. So finally we are in the wagon and they push us all in. I don't know how many. We hardly had a place to sit down next to each other. No water, no other things either. Finally somebody had a, a bucket and it was locked and closed in and we never, uh, until they got us to Auschwitz we didn't uh, see anybody. But one of uh, my aunts father, he somehow looked out and he saw the name Warsaw. There was a little grate. He said, we are doomed. 
said, if we go and throw with Poland, then we are doomed. And he was right. He never came back again. Poor thing. So we arrived to the Auschwitz camp, which you never heard about. And you were separated at this point from your family. It was no, just... we were together, all of us. My oh, grandmother, you're... my aunts, my cousins, Avi. But not your parents no, and not your my parents. siblings. They were, in, they were in the group already. They were already dead, which we didn't know. Oh, they were in the group ahead because of you? Because they were ahead, yes. And we, I went almost to the last group, the one before the last, and they were the first. And Bursi's parents. And another aunt. Three, um, they were in the other camp. And also, it depends on where you live. That's where you took, they took you to this ghetto or to this ghetto. Anyway, the arrival, like if Primo Levi describes it exactly, if you read the book, they opened the, do the door, finally when we got there, and they said, Rouse, 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 schnell, schnell, fast, fast, get out, all right? And before you had a chance to know what's doing, you were sent either this side or this side. And my grandmother and my aunt with the baby, and the other aunt with the other baby, went to the, with my grandmother. And Abby's brother was so sharp, she said, to, he says to her mother, Ma, give the baby to grandma. He saw right away that it is taking the older people and the babies, then it's no good to one group. And the healthy people go this way, then it must be, maybe we're going to work. She said, I'm not giving the baby to anybody. The baby goes where I'm going. And that's what it is. And, it, and she, so she went with the baby. So anyway, they, when, when, when they marched us into the camp, Joe was there when we went to visit, and bring us to a big place. You have to undress completely. And we, teenagers and nothing, and all the and they are sending the soldiers there. First, we didn't want to, I mean, but there was no question. You had to do it. Just put your clothes on, you'll get it back, which we never saw again anyway, either. They took everything because a lot of people did this too. You sold in something, but you had a few dollars or I mean, whatever money or something, maybe we could exchange it for food or whatever. You know, you have to think of those things. When people go through the borders, they do those things. Anyway, they took us all, we had to undress completely naked. And then the guy came, said, women or guys, I don't even know anymore. They shaved us completely everywhere and gave us some rags. They just threw at you. The size, it didn't matter. No underwear, no socks, no nothing. Just as something to put on. And the only thing you could keep is your shoes. And by the way, Avi's shoes were stolen the first night. That's, that's, uh, that's one thing which didn't help her either. Because she put it down <coughs> where they took us down those, bri uh, they thought, called us the bridges, those, those wooden planks where she was sleeping. She put it down like she was used for, my you put your shoes down. You don't think that somebody is going to steal it. So they stole it, she had no shoes.